is world production in 2013-14 up by uh, up by four percent, and you have some numbers. Uh, uh, the uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy that uh, uh, dry pea, uh, dry bean production uh, brand is estimated is even far higher, far higher than the number that I have. And uh, additionally, we have the lentil production at close to uh, close to four million tons. For uh, I think the world. Uh, has enough uh, enough pulses uh, supplies or pulses production this year, and obviously that's going to that's likely to have an impact on prices. Uh, most of the producers uh, primarily target South Asia, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, 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 and Sri Lanka, the, the South Asian uh, uh, South Asian region, uh, and uh, uh, it is a South Asian region which actually deserves and desperately needs a lot of protein, a lot of vegetable protein, particularly uh, in India. And China, we found in the last one year or so, has been emerging as a, as a, as a major market, as a major importer of peas. And uh, the food use uh, for, uh, for peas is growing in China. And again, that's, that's a new demand segment which is beginning to grow. For when, when, you, look at, when you look at global uh, economic uh, growth situation, uh, the currency fluctuations, this potential strengthening of the dollar, poten potential contraction of liquidity in the global economy, a rebound in agriculture production across grains, oil seeds, and pulses. What do we have? We, we can't escape the conclusion that, that uh, prices uh, will become softer and softer. So the question, the big question that I want to ask this house is, can pulses defy? this uh, uh, gravitational force of falling prices. I'm afraid uh, I can't uh, persuade myself into believing that pulses will be able to withstand or, 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 uh, uh, or uh, defy this gravitational force of an overall decline in agriculture commodity prices in, in 2014. I think that, that's, that's uh, the conclusion that I want to make. Very quickly <coughs> about uh, India, yes, uh, the, the government of India's agriculture ministry's harvest numbers came out uh, last week. Uh, uh, extraordinary uh, improvement in numbers, 19.8 million tons vis-a-vis -vis 18.4 million tons uh, last year. The target for this year was 19 million tons and probably for the first time in the history of pulses cultivation, uh, we've, uh, production has actually breached uh, uh, the, the target. And I must mention government policies are working, our research initiatives are working, and I'm so delighted that two of the senior most scientists in India are present with us. They have, uh, they have their presentations uh, slated uh, uh, for this afternoon. Uh, doc Dr. Swapan Dutta, DDG of ICAR, and uh, Dr. Gauda, DDG of ICRISAT, and I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get to learn from them uh, what, they, what their uh, research initiatives are, how these research uh, is, uh, is going to uh, impact India's production. Therefore, we've also found, uh, uh, given this big jump in production over the last two years, uh, in 2011-12, in our production was 17 million tons. 2012-13, it was 18.4, and now in 2013-14, it's 19.8. There is a distinct slowdown in pulses import into India. Uh, uh, and pulses import statistics are maintained on a fiscal year basis, which is April to March. Uh, between, uh, between April and September, in the first six months of 2013-14 uh, of, uh, financial year, imports were about 1.4 million tons. By, uh, between April and December, 2013 imports uh, were uh, an estimated uh, 2 million tons. And my own personal projection for import of pulses for India, the whole of 2013-14, uh, April 2013 to March 2014, could be, uh, it could be anything between 2.6 and 2.7 million tons. This 2.6 or 2.7 million tons, Jeff, is 1 million tons lower than the number for the previous year. The previous year, 2012-13, our import was, uh, was 3.8 million tons, according to Government of India's import statistic. And this year, it's likely to be at least a million tons, uh, million tons lower, simply because there's a huge rebound in, uh, in uh, India's uh, agriculture production. I think with this, I'll stop, and if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chandashekhar. Um, 
one thing, and we can maybe debate this later, but I noticed one point in there you made about China becoming an emerging importer of peas after India. And I think the numbers, and, and Brian might be able to substantiate this, but it's actually now China ahead of India as an importer of pulses, so, of peas. Um, next up, Mr. Sudhakar Tamar is going to speak a little more on India specifically, supply and demand, and some of the drivers into the India market. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Minister Lal Stewart, His Excellency Dr. Pax Ligoya, uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, and also a very distinguished and wonderful team at IPGA, which has made this historic um, conference with over 800 delegates possible. And the people who were responsible for this um, achievement are sitting on my right. Ladies and round, a thunderous round of applause for them. I have been asked to make sense for India or on pulses in about 20, 20 minutes. But Mr. Chairman, may I request that when India occupies more than 25% of the global trade, at least you should allow me 20, 25 minutes to explain my case. <laughs> but before I do that, 23. I was, thank you very much. I was about to show you a video which was later in the, later in the presentation. But I think I should show that video now to make sense of these numbers, because numbers are a very interesting thing. We have here in the audience maybe 300 people, and if I ask you to tell me your number on the import and the production, chances are 99% would be different. So this is the beauty with the numbers. We can say all the things and still get away with it, because there is um, no um, reliable or, um, I mean, opinions differ. Uh, Hari, can we have that video, please, which we were supposed to show a little later, but let's start with that video. This is how we do supply and demand estimation and calculation of numbers. 28 vacuums a week, that's a lot of vacuums to sell. And you only have seven salesmen? Certainly. That means they've got to sell 13 vacuums apiece. You're right. 13 vacuum cleaners apiece? Yes, sir. What are you talking about? Seven times 13 is not 28. Yes, it is. Seven times four is 28. Mr. Chandler, 7 times 13 is 28. 7 times 4 is 28. Did you ever go to school, stupid? Yes, sir. And I come out the same way. Come here, man. You claim that 7 goes into 28 13 times? That's right. Go ahead. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's the board. Well, go ahead. Go All right, ahead. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to prove it. Go ahead. Now, you've got seven salesmen. That's right. Okay. There's a seven. Where is it? Right there. All right. Now, you've got 28 vacuums a week you got to sell. That's right. I'm going to divide. There's your 28 vacuums. Now, wait, are you claiming that seven goes into 28, 13 times? That's right. Show me. Seven into two? Seven will go into two. Certainly not. So, i got to take the two from there and put it down here. Right over here. Put it down there? Yeah, I'm going to use that after a while. That's, that's a cute little two. Yeah. Now, seven to eight? Once. Once. Now, I'm going to carry the seven from here and put it under the eight. Seven from eight? One. One. A minute ago, I didn't use that little two. What are you going to do? i got to use that two now. I'm going to take it from there, and I'm going to put it right there. Uh -huh. Now, seven to 21? Three times. That's correct. Seven to 28, 13. Oh, no, 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 nothing of the kind. What kind of figures are these? Just okay. a minute. It's got to come out right. We'll multiply this. <laughs> Go ahead. Multiply it? Put down 13. Okay, 13. Uh, that's right. And seven salesmen, put that down. Seven sales. Now, you claim that seven times 13 amounts to what? 28. <laughs> Prove that. Seven times three? Uh, 21. Seven times one? Seven. Seven and one? Eight. And a two. 28. Now, no, wait a minute. How do you figure, boy? I, you I can't. Think good. No, 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 you can't do That's that. That's right. No, nothing of the kind. We'll add this up. Adam? Put down 13 uh, seven times. Okay. It's one, two, two three. three. Four, Four, five, five six, six, seven. seven. Now, wait a minute. You claim that all that added up amounts to what? Twenty-eight. If it does, you've got a job. Thank you. Three, Oh, six. no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. You're hired.
So this is a simplistic uh, view sometimes how we go to the number. India, ladies and gentlemen, of course we talk about obvious the largest, ex ex uh, largest importer, consumer and uh, importer of pulses, but also to go a little bit in the background, especially for, um, for the benefit of our overseas guests, India is a kaleidoscope um, of colors, smells, sounds, language, cultures, and we have, my friends tell me that as a nation and as people we have innate ability to thrill and frustrate at the same time, also inspire and annoy. So no matter how opinionated we are about India, but we can love or hate, but we can't ignore uh, such a large uh, nation who, which has this kind of power in the pulse trading industry. We, I owe my gratitude for this slide to my friend Brian Clancy. In our lifetime, if we go the way we are going, we need to double our food supplies. And as the largest, as, as the largest democracy and the, and the third largest economy, second most populous nation, we 1.3 billion Indians, of which about 60% are under 30, we need pulses as an inseparable diet. It's not out of choice or knowledge, it's more out of habit and culture. Unfortunately, we have 18% of the global population, but we have only 2% of the agricultural land and less than 3.5% of the water resources, which puts a burden, and despite being self-sufficient and having a record production of 263.3 million tons this year, we still need to import food worth $25 billion, which is about 4% of the GDP. Let's put in perspective here again, India, we consume less than 30 to, 40 per, 30 to 40 grams protein per day, but there's a heavy reliance on, on carbohydrates. We love our rice, lent, uh, rice, bread, and potatoes, so 75% of our food consists of carbohydrates, which is depicted in the darker um, bluish uh, color. Little bit about on Indian pulses. We grow pulses on an area of about 25 to 27 million hectares under various agroecological zones. And 87% of this area is depending on the rain gourd, so it's non-irrigated. And the major crop cycle, we have two crop cycles. Um, sorry for repeating this, but I think for the benefit of overseas guests, 65% of the crop pulses crop is coming from our winter cycle, which is uh, Rabi. And Kharif, which is monsoon, is about 35%. And being the main supplier, the chickpeas and the lentils and the yellow peas, uh, especially for this conference, which is coinciding with the Rabi cycle, is of special interest to our overseas guests. So when you look at the global pulses calendar, because we have two crops, in a year of 12 months, about 10 months, we are very busy harvesting or seeding or talking about pulses. Chickpeas, for which yellow peas acts as a substitute, Pigeon peas for which lentils to some extent act as a substitute, all, they constitute about 60 to 65% of the pulses crops in India, with six major states, western, central, and southern states, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, accounting for about 90% of the total production. Pulses in India, we consider it as a political commodity, especially in election year. Therefore, the value chain, and historically it has been, is very fragmented and characterized by multi-layered uh, involvement of small-scale uh, and medium-sized enterprises. Also, a, a great degree of government intervention at all levels. Interestingly, this is one of the few industries in India where large multinationals with hundreds of billions of dollars of turnover, they rub shoulder to shoulder with somebody who has very small, but so this is a very unique industry in, in, in India. This is how we consume pulses. This is not a very interesting view, so I'll change the view. We have this unique tradition of consuming pulses in every imaginable way. Breads, cakes, curries, drinks, snacks, ingredients. And if you simply type Google dal, or say Indian recipes for pulses, you'll be greeted with 2.2 million 
results from the Google. And we have, every day we develop new ways to consume pulses. I was working on a street in, in, in Calcutta, and I saw these Canadian yellow peas being sold on a roadside uh, uh, not shop in a kiosk in, 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 in Calcutta. Then I started talking to, and the, the, the gentleman on your uh, left is Mr. Ram Pal Yadav, who's an immigrant worker from Bihar into Calcutta. Each day, he buys five kilo of yellow peas, Canadian yellow peas from the wholesale market at 32 rupees a kilo, which is equivalent of about $480 per metric ton CNF. He mixes his spices, chilies, and potatoes, and sells 100 plates from this five kilo at a CNF value, or at the equivalent value of $3,000 per metric ton, which is a value addition of almost 800% without investing in inventory and without having any reasonable fixed expenses. So this is a simple example of our innovative, in India we like to call it culinary jugar, the which can transform the most drab and non-exciting feed peas or yellow peas which we into the most delicious meal in India. This is the potential we are talking about here. With increasing population currently at about 1.3 billion people, there is no doubt that domestic crop is inadequate to meet the entire demand, requiring annual import in excess of about 3 million tons, give or take which side you are. And some other interesting facts is that about 60% of Indian pulses are consumed at home. And because of declining per capita consumption, we have, yesterday this, the slide was shown um, by, by my friend Gordon Bacon, that after cereals, India, uh, the pulses is the second most declining um, product, about 28 to 29%. And, but the heartwarming factor is that about four million tons of pulses are now being used in value added sector, which is the way to, to, to go 